Spirit put an ear plug. Never used a cotton pad. No, what? it's so addictive. It is genuinely addictive. To be honest, genuinely. I never, I never even knew what they were for. You I, must have monkey looks. Well, more worryingly, whoever wears those earphones <laughs> next oh. is going to be devastated. <laughs> it's, it's not like there's stuff <laughs> pouring out of my ears on a daily basis. Mm. Ooh, grotesque. Um, we'll have a look, we'll stick another tune on and then we'll come up. We have a kind of Q&A that we have to ask all of our Excellent. guests, uh, so we'll be asking you to react to it instinctively and try and get a little bit deeper under the skin of Scroobius Pip after this. 1967, The Small Faces, of course, and Ichiku Park, Steve Show, Six Music with me, Steve Merchant, and uh, my little gang here, we're talking to Scroobius Pip, and uh, we've just heard uh, some classic, classic smoke and, spoken words, smoke and words, yeah, 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 and sometimes I choose not to use the English language, um, <laughs> I just, you know, feel very much that uh, words are my tool, and that, uh, like Shakespeare, I can invent my own words, Maverick, and, um, true yeah, thank you very much. Um, before we play a tune from your, uh, album, it's called Angles? Angles, yes. Yes, um, I almost said Angels after Everyone you told me specifically it was Angles. For angels, but it is in fact called Angles. Any reason for that? Um, just because the name we had for it was stolen by a band called Pete and the Pirates, and their oh. album was coming out before us. Yes. But then we, you know, at, uh, uh, one of the tracks on the album is called Angles, and it just seemed to fit because the album does just talk about a lot of different subjects from many different angles. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, now then, we have this little Q and A that we put together, and it's, reve it's revealed some interesting things about people in the past. Um, so I'm just going to fire these questions at you, okay. and just react instinctively. Go with your first uh, thought. Yes. Okay, first up, Scroob, what would you ban? Um, smoking more. Just just really ban it everywhere, out in the public as well. Even more banning smoking? More, not about the smoke, but just about the reaction that the smoking ban got, and then the anger of the smokers. I just, I, I get a sick pleasure out of it. You I just like banging, <laughs> yeah, banning just stuff? Ban, just particularly smoking. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Just ban some other stuff. Imagine what they'd say and still keep it allowed, like in the House of Parliament, as they have or whatever, or in their little bar, still keep it legal there. So sure. Furious. People can just <laughs> queue up to get in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, what advice would you give the teenage Scroobius? Um, start growing a beard earlier. I said, as soon, <laughs> as soon as I got this thing, as soon as I got this thing, this all started happening. Career, you know, all, all, all went from there. Does the beard, because the beard must attract quite a specific woman, I imagine. Um, yeah. Because it probably well, alienates far more, <laughs> yeah, right, <exactly. laughs> Thank Christ. But it probably <laughs> alienated more than it did attract. Yeah, oh, oh, it's a weird one, it, you know, I've, yeah, you know, ho hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, Break down some walls for other bearded men out there. So yeah. It's not such a taboo. And ZZ Top were the pioneers. Yeah, yeah. And you're it's coming not, I, mean, I, have, I have food in it. I regularly shampoo and condition it. It smells nice. It's mm. soft to the touch. It's like touching um, a, a, a cloud, albeit a black cloud. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong with. Can it, you just touch the beard just to check that's, that's true, a, Sammy? Confirm. Well, that's really oh, nice. That's nice yeah. Mm. That's, yeah, that's a good beard. Would you advise young other teenagers? You've advised your teenage self. Yes. What about other teenagers to grow beards? We've got a, a lot of younger listeners. Do you find that it has it been generally beneficial, or have people at times said, "Ha ha, beardy," oh, and called it a laugh? I, I'm, I mean, after all, I, I live in Essex, and I, I don't think any level of success would stop the shouts of beardy <laughs> of as I walk down the street. <laughs> yeah. It's very awkward uh, when you get a hoot on the horn, and you're not sure if it's someone who's, who's recognised from the spoken word work and the, yeah. uh, you know, the music that we've done, or someone who's just noticed I have a large beard and it's kind of inappropriate for on the streets. Yeah, yeah. I should be kept inside. Oi, beardy. Yeah, Even oi if you made your name yeah. as the greatest beard grower in the world, oi, you would save millions of lives. But Beardy! said it's accurate. To be fair, it's accurate. It I, can't, I can't fault it. It's <laughs> it not must, an inaccurate shout. It must be the same for you, Steve, because you're very, very tall, but mm. you're also quite famous, and people shout at you for both reasons. And again, you can never be quite sure they're just mm. mocking your height well, or praising your fame. I used to be able to avoid it, so if I just heard, hey, look at that lanky geek, I'd have thought they're probably not talking about me, and moved on. But now it's, hey, look at that lanky geek, it's Steve Bridge off the telly. <laughs> yeah. And there's no yeah. denying that it's, they definitely mean me. You see, I constantly have the awkward thing, like, I was, I was, I was walking in, in, in Leon C recently, I don't know why I had to to put the name in, but it seems seems relevant. And some lads walking on going, Dan, Dan Lasac, Dan, and it was awkward because like I can't turn around because I'm not Dan Lasac, but yeah. they have got the right. I am who they think I am, but I'm not. So it just turned awkward because I followed for about five minutes, and it was this awkward kind of just walking along. But it looked rude. I know what you mean. I, I the one I find awkward is, um, are you famous? <laughs> Because I think by asking that question, you've answered it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But also that if you if you go well, yeah, I am. Yeah, that's terribly arrogant. Yeah, and if you don't, it just seems rude. And, and so I don't know what to do. I normally I just run away. Uh, do I know you from somewhere? I yeah, get, I get an awful lot. And it's like, well, I don't know what to say because it's like, probably not. No. Yeah. Let's leave it. Yeah. I've had. Are you somebody? 
<laughs> are you somebody? Yeah. Wow. That charity event that I went to. Are you somebody? Are you somebody? I thought, I've well, had, that's, that's got us all thinking, hasn't it? Yeah. I've had, oh, I love, I love that. I love extras. I'm your biggest fan. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary. Um, but it's heartbreaking, I'd imagine, for, it's for your biggest fan to have such, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> such, a, such a situation like that. <laughs> um, uh, so, hang on, let's get back to these questions. Yes. What would you like to, uh, apologise for? Um, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, <laughs> to say I'm not big on apologise, just anything that I've done that's, that's wrong. I feel it's fine to apologise, but I don't like to apologise for things that people perceive as wrong that I still feel is completely correct. So what, is there something you've done <laughs> that you would think is perfectly okay, but you know other people poo-poo it? I don't know, I can't think of anything that springs to mind immediately. A, a, a lot of people- a hit and run, drive by. <laughs> Again, <laughs> they were- they just, they, they, it, purely by shouting away beardy, I think you opened yourself <laughs> exactly, up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Shout away beardy to someone driving a van, yeah. when you're- While drunk. Uh, uh, yeah. It's just <laughs> not- it's not a good setup. <laughs> Um, if you could jump into any film and live the life depicted in that film, what film would you choose? Um, I'd probably jump into a, a Say Anything st starring uh, John Cusack. Would you be playing the role of Lloyd Dobler? Yeah, I'd sure. love to be Lloyd Dobler, the guy's a legend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To know um, Lloyd Dobler is to love Lloyd Dobler, or was the tagline on the poster, which, you know, oh, what better life could you have? Two key things about that film, of course. One is that I believe he's a kickboxer. Yep, he done kickboxing. Um, something that you can relate to? I've not done any kickboxing okay. at all. So that would be I'd a like good way to. to feel a bit closer yeah. to him. Yeah, no, be, I, I could I could go with that. I'm, I'm more of a, a grappler myself, but I'd, you know, I'd like to develop <laughs> my kickboxing <laughs> skills. And he holds up um, a stereo at some point, and does he play Peter Gabriel? Yeah, I believe so. I do have an almost identical a, a, a ghetto blaster in, in my house, so all, all, all I'm missing is a Peter Gabriel tape, and I'm, I'm there. We can sort that out for you. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, uh, what wakes you up in a cold sweat? Um... Any kind of recurring nightmares? No, just generally s sleeping on, 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 on tour buses always wakes me up petrified because the slightest bump when it's waking you makes you think you're literally about to die. <laughs> sure. And I'll, I'll often, I'll often <laughs> We've just wake up panicked and sit, r <laughs> run to the front really with no real reason and the driver will, you know, I'll have to play it down and be like, just come and see if you're alright and that and you <laughs> got something short to it's like not saying I'm petrified I'm sweating I've gone pale under this beard because it's not very um, rock and roll is it to be that not, scared it's not very rock and roll to be that scared but yeah it, it happens um listen thank you very much indeed can you hang around because we're going to um we're going to cast dispersions to uh, about three records later we normally listen to three tunes and uh, cast a verdict on them would you be happy to hang yeah, around I'd love and to. do that you're right okay but in the meantime let's play a tune from uh Angles um, we've played it before and I'm sure people have heard it, but it's always worth listening to again. Letter from God to Man. In the album Angles, that's Dan Lassac versus Scroobius Pip and Letter from God to Man. Scroob will uh, hang around in the studio, but uh, we'll play a trail and we're back with a choice from Rufus. How confident do you feel about introducing your musical choice in the style of uh, Steve LeMay? I was only if you said that, Steve. <laughs> uh, reasonably confident is the answer. And we should bear in mind that it's a work in progress. It is very much. I, uh, listeners shouldn't think this is a kind of, you know, this is set in stone, this impression. It's always not. It's a very early, early draw. It's a peek behind the curtain. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play a track today called, uh, if not for you, by George Harrison. Uh, it's a cover of Bob Dylan tune. No, it's, it's not in place. It sounds more like Gary Crowley. It yeah. did a little bit sound like Crowley, yeah. actually. Maybe yeah. I should work my through the six music presenters. Earlier it was a lot better than that. It was, oh, wasn't yeah. it? I think no, I'm always better off I've just heard him. Right. Um, if we can, if we yeah, can don't worry, don't it, worry, yeah. we don't want to rush anything. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We know it took many years to get the Mandela down. Well, that did take <laughs> a very, very long time. And it's going to take years, has... it's going to take years to undo all the offense that you caused <laughs> yeah, with that exactly. Okay, so what have you got for um, us? But it's, it's a George Harrison track covering, uh, covering Bob Dylan. And th this is very much in the light of my recent nuptials. we married for uh, seven days now, and this is, uh, this is If Not For You by George Harrison. What was his musical choice on this week's Steve show? What was it, Ruth? Steve, it was, uh, it was a track from uh, George Harrison's first solo album, All Things Must Pass, released in 1970, and that was uh, a cover of Bob Dylan's tune, If Not For You. Thank you very much indeed. We'll be back after the news, delving into the pigeonhole, uh, giving our verdict on the recent Oasis single, and, uh, the new one from Keen. Look forward to that. Back after the news. <laughs> on digital. Online. Elastica, of course, and Connection. Steve Show, Six Music with me, Steve Merchant, uh, fast approaching the end of the show. Um, Scroobius Pip has been our guest today. Question here on the, uh, text. It says, uh, Steve, can you ask Pip if he will make any more episodes of his TV show or his show? Uh, wh what's the story? Um, I did a little, um, a video, a, w a webcast thing, like a four or five part thing, and it was just to show how 
I live in a small town as opposed to in London, so I have to find other things to do. So, so I made a cribs, but then also did um, just different contests set to a background of, of, of metal music. <laughs> so during um, <laughs> A Symphony of Destruction by Megadeth, I saw how many origami pigs I could make right. in that time. <laughs> and I had a, a Sudoku, and during um, Pantera's vulgar display of power, I saw how much I could complete of that <laughs> Sudoku. I also did a, a ham and chicken sandwich making contest, again to Megadeth, I believe. But <laughs> These are very much contests with yourself, are they? They were just with myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's just time. It's just time trials. It's simply... It's, 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 <laughs> There's nothing time more trials. special, yeah. just time trials, people. <laughs> you know, anyone can... Anyone can challenge me. I said I've got most of them on, on the MySpace and that, but yeah, they're yeah, just <laughs> good to test yourself when you've got a boring life. I think this is a uh, this is a great um, great way to just promote the rock and roll life for a lot of yeah. young people out there who are thinking yeah. maybe they should study in their exams, work hard, try and get a job uh, in the city. No, 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 oh. just write some poetry. It's good with the cribs. A lot of people look and go, that can't really be your house because, as I make clear, it's my mum's house. But yeah, no, no, I still live in my bedroom. You live um, in Stanford. Yes, I live with my mum in my bedroom in Stanford. It's all right. You know, I've got, you know, I, I've, I've got my own life. I don't have to be home for, for dinner or anything. There's no <laughs> boundaries. Yeah. I can do what I want. I can bring people home or, you know, yeah, within reason, stay out as, as late as I like. What time is she picking you up from here? Uh, she's outside <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't let her come in because you don't want to embarrass yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Well, listen. Well, thank you for hanging around because what we normally do is we um, we don't really have much to talk about in the last twenty minutes. So what we do is we play some big new singles and give our verdict on them. Um, sometimes it's interesting. Generally, it just uh, fills up time. So um, <laughs> I'm actually quite looking forward to this because I've not heard it yet. This is the uh, forthcoming single from Oasis, released at the end of September, and it's the shock of the lightning. So uh, we'll play it. See what you think. <laughs> We're going to be asking your uh, opinions of the songs as we go around the table. Steve, <laughs> over to you. Oh, it's, uh, it's, 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 getting it's, getting it's not bad. It is getting bad. better. It's, it's not bad, bad at all. Yeah, no, it's shaping up. Um, yeah, that's uh, obviously Oasis, Shock of the Lightning from their uh, forthcoming album, Dig Out Your Soul, which is released October the 6th. And uh, there we are. Sammy, how tiny were you when Oasis first appeared? Oh, did you exist? Minuscule. I, I don't know. When did they first appear? What was it, how, 94? Uh, yeah, no, eight. It was before then, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> was it? No, it wasn't. Ninety four. I was eight in nineteen ninety four. I can remember them happening. Um, I was more fixated on Pulp and Blur at the time. Ooh, blimey! At least it wasn't Aqua or the Spice Girls. <laughs> um, I, um, it's Oasis keep doing this to me. They keep building me up and letting me down. The last few things have been quite good. The thing with the Chemical Brothers got me excited. It went my appetite for a new album, and then I've just kind of deflated like a sad old balloon. Mm. I'm not sure there was a nice powerfully drummy bit near the end which got my juices flowing but and I had one of my pet gripes which was the the chorus not being as powerful as the verse you're supposed to build up and then release and not do it the other way around because I get groggy there's a reference in passing to Magical Mystery Tour do you think that the um the you know obsession with the Beatles and so on has it worn out its welcome hair yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it's it, you know it's it's Oasis isn't it it's I didn't the Beatles, you know, progress? Didn't they start out as like a little garage band and then become something spectacular and go off and do loads of weird and wonderful things? Where this this could come off any Oasis album. It's enjoyable. It is what it is. Uh, nice Back to the Future reference. Love is a time machine up on the silver screen. I thought maybe maybe there's a DeLorean in the video. Mm. I don't know. But nah, that was just bland as hell, wasn't it? Um, harsh words from Harry. Do you echo those, Rufus? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, as Harry's saying, that the Beatles really progressed, and and to think that the, the only kind of time when Gallagher stuck his head above the parapet to talk about the music industry is slamming Jay Z's appearance at Glastonbury. <laughs> it's like, oh God, there really isn't anything exciting or relevant about you anymore. And love is a litany. I d I'm still trying to work out what love is a litany means, um, and I will for the rest of the afternoon. But it didn't have any effect on me at all. That song, really. Scroobius Pip is with us. Have you ever been an Oasis fan? Um, yeah. I yeah, when they came out, I really enjoyed them. But again, it's the same thing that it doesn't seem to develop that much. Kind of thing is, it's kind of it's it's Oasis by numbers, which for half the audience that'll be a compliment, and for the other half that'll be a put down. And it's it's as simple as that, really. It's it's very much what they do. But is progression in music is that is that so important?